Citizens don't take psychedelics because it's illegal. Neither do marionettes. Neither do robots. None of these well-behaved and mechanistic reductionist images of humanity take psychedelics because it's misbehaving. Misbehaving is a great sin. In fact, it's enshrined as the first sin. You'll regard that the psychedelic issue was there in Eden and somebody misbehaved and then they got tossed out forever and their children's children into the chaos of history. It's interesting to read in Genesis why this was. It was because they will become as we are, says Yahweh. They will become as we are if they eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. I suggest to you that this is precisely what we should seek to do. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. It's a wonderful thing to learn to be able to stand up and yell bullshit because so much is being slung and nobody is talking about the primacy of experience and the dignity of the individual. The dignity of the individual. We went a long way with this in America before we betrayed it. And it wasn't only betrayed by the clowns in Washington. It's also betrayed by anybody who clusters themselves around the feet of some self-proclaimed nabob. Because the fact of the matter is, nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows. Nobody has the faintest idea. The best guesses are lies. You may be sure of it. And so to pretend that one human being will lead another out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth is ludicrous, absolutely grotesque, a product of this empowering of the human image that has gone on through several thousand years of dominator culture. If you want a teacher Try a waterfall, or a mushroom, or a mountain wilderness, or a storm-pounded seashore. This is where the action is. It's not back in the hive. It's not in the anthill. It's not knocking your head against the floor in front of somebody who claims that because of their lineage and whose feet they washed and whose feet they washed, that you should give credence to them. Knowledge is provisional, and uh, we, we are yet to approach even the first moment of civilized understanding. The way it is to be done is by trusting yourself, trusting your intuition. Reject authority. Authority is a lie and an abomination. Authority will lead you into ruin. It's not real. And it isn't, don't get the idea that it's this liberal rap about how everybody has a piece of the action. You know, the Jews know something, the Buddhists know something, the Huichol know something. Nonsense. Rubbish. Nobody knows anything. These are different kinds of shell games that have been worked out by priestly castes of people to keep things under control. Institutions seek to maximize control, control, control. That's what they're into. Did you think they were in the business of enlightening you? Saving your soul? Forget it. Control is what this is all about. And to the degree that we commit ourselves to ideology, we are poisoned. Any ideology, Marxism, Catholicism, objectivism, you name it, rubbish all rubbish. What is real is experience. What is real is this moment. And so then what it becomes about is what are the frontiers of experience? How much of that has been taken away from us by these dominators, by these priesthoods, by these cults, by these philosophical shell games? Well, a lot. That's the whole story of history. 
our growing unease, our growing disease, our malaise is all about the fact that we are kept from the wellspring of experience. We are sexually repressed. You may not feel it, but look back a hundred years to a world where pianos wore pants. You know, we, maybe we've made a little progress on the sexual thing. Maybe not. Maybe more or less than we think. But we are repressed in all of these areas. Uh, and we are particularly repressed in the area that relates to the psychedelic experience. Because it is, it is raid to the dominator insect invasion. They can't take it. They can't stand it because it empowers the individual. It dissolves the cheerful model of science. It's just exposed as, you know, a nice story. It enriches the accessible universe tenfold, a hundredfold, a thousandfold. It makes the individual complete within his or her self. And this completion of the individual is extremely destructive to the plan of the dominators, which is that you will be a cog in a machine. You will participate in the life of an organization, not your life, the life of an organization. You will go to some bullshit job. You will pour the best years of your life and your genius and your hopes into this. You will serve an institution. You will serve, 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 serve. Well, it's a bad idea for free people to go along with this. A much better idea would be to insist on the dignity of human beings, to recognize that the freeing of slaves, the giving of the vote to women, the ending of public whippings, that this program of political enlightenment must also then include hands-off on how people want to relate to changing their minds. We are not interested in being sexually regulated by the state, and we are not interested in being intellectually, spiritually, emotionally manipulated by the state. The state should stand down in this issue. The state is acting as the enforcing arm of the dominator culture, specifically of fundamentalist screwballs who, you know, are horrified by all this, by the notion that people would claim the authenticity of their own minds, that people would stand in the light of nature and reject original sin and the guilt from Eden and, you know, the sins of the fathers and all this rubbish which is handed down. What the archaic revival is going to have to mean if it has teeth is a re-empowering of the individual and a consequent lowering of the of the profile of institutions, especially government. We need to think about these things because we have bought into the idea that we have to serve and behave and be enslaved, else chaos will engulf the world. We need to carry out our analysis of the situation to the point where we can embrace chaos and see that chaos is the environment in which we all thrive. If we continue as we have, then, you know, we're doomed. And the judgment of some higher power on that will be they didn't even struggle, you know. They went to the boxcars with their suitcases and they didn't even struggle. This is too nightmarish to contemplate. We're talking about the fate of a whole planet. Why are people so polite? Why are they so patient? Why are they so forgiving of gangsterism and betrayal? Uh, it's very difficult to understand. I believe it's because the dominator culture is increasingly more and more sophisticated in its perfection of subliminal mechanisms of control. 
And I don't mean anything grandiose and paranoid. I just mean that through press releases and sound bites and the enforced idiocy of television, uh, the, the, the drama of a dying world has been turned into a soap opera for most people. And they don't understand that it's, it's their story and that they will eat it in the final act if somewhere between here and the final act they don't stand up on their hind legs and howl. So this whole uh, effort to bring the psychedelic experience back into prominence is an effort to empower individuals and to get them to see that we are bled of our authenticity by vampirish institutions that will never of their own accord leave us alone. There must be a moment when the machinery and the working of the machinery becomes so odious that people are willing to stride forward and throw sand on the track and uh, force a reevaluation of the situation. And it's not done through organizing, it's not done through vanguard parties or cadres of intellectual elites, it's done through just walking away from all of that. Claiming your identity, claiming your vision, your being, your intuition, and then acting from that without regret, cleanly, without regret. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of After School. If you enjoy the art on this channel, then you will most certainly enjoy our prints, shirts, and kids book. The prints are all taken from some of the most memorable sections of our favorite animations. These are sure to add life to any wall in your home. We also have a simple selection of shirts and hoodies available, so you can rep after school out in the matrix. And lastly, our children's book, Why Don't Country Flags Use the Color Purple, is ready to order on Amazon. It's a hardcover adventure book that makes learning fun for all ages. Thank you so much for supporting After School. What was once just an idea has now become something very real for all the world to see, and none of it would have been possible without you.